In an exclusive CNN report, sources say special counsel Jack Smith and his investigators are interested in a chaotic Oval Office meeting during the final days of Donald Trump's presidency. In that heated December 2020 meeting, outside advisors faced off with top West Wing attorneys pushing for extreme efforts to keep Trump in office, even martial law. Joined now by CNN Zach Cohen for more details. Zach, uh, what are investigators trying to learn about that meeting and, and how might that be critical to this case? Yeah, Jim, we've learned that prosecutors have asked multiple witnesses in just the last few weeks about this December 18, 2020 Oval Office meeting. Obviously, that happened after Trump not only lost the election, but after states had already ratified their results. So it was pretty locked in, waiting for ahead of January 6th. But in this meeting, we had a, a group of outside advisors people like Michael Flynn, Trump's former national security advisor, people like Patrick Byrne, the former Overstock CEO, and Sidney Powell, really pitching Trump on these extreme ideas for um, keeping him in power, overturning the election results. Um, you know, they got severe pushback from White House attorneys. But Rudy Giuliani, who also sat with prosecutors recently, was asked about this meeting as well. Um, it's interesting because Rudy participated in the meeting itself and even proposed a plan where they could gain access to voting systems in Georgia using local election officials who were maybe sympathetic to their cause. So interesting that Jack Smith and his prosecutors are asking about this meeting at this stage in the investigation when it appears there could be nearing a charging decision in at least part of the probe. Yeah, I remember uh, reporting on the Trump presidency at that time and, you know, we talked to Trump's own advisors and they were saying, what are some of these people doing in the Oval Office coming in and out of the West Wing talking to the president of the United States about this stuff? Um, we, and Zach, we also learned this week that an attorney disciplinary committee recommended that Rudy Giuliani be disbarred in Washington, D.C. for his efforts on behalf of Trump in those uh, days when they were trying to overturn the 2020 election results. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, just like these advisors and Rudy were told in this Oval Office meeting that they had no evidence of fraud, the, um, this bar um, panel, sort of a disciplinary panel, has recommended that he should not be able to practice law anymore because he filed these lawsuits without any evidence of election fraud. Their ruling was very harsh. They called it a destructive case, and when he claimed fraud, he had no evidence of. So it has to go through two more phases. Um, the D.C. Court of Appeals has to also agree with the recommendation, but a blow to Rudy Giuliani's uh, le legal career potentially here. And that's what the committee uh, in the statement here, you can see he claimed massive election fraud, but had no evidence of it. By prosecuting that destructive case, Mr. Giuliani, a sworn officer of the court, forfeited his right to practice law, he should be disbarred. I mean, you don't see that kind of stuff happening every day, especially to somebody who was once dubbed America's mayor, um, Zach Cohen. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, let's bring in uh, Ellie Honig for more uh, legal perspective on all of this. He's a former federal prosecutor uh, and a senior, senior legal analyst. And uh, by the way, the author of the book, Untouchable, How Powerful People Get Away With It. Ellie, always great to talk to you. Help us understand why this 2020 Oval Office meeting is so significant to investigators, I mean, I remember when this was being reported at the time, I mean, there, there was a lot of interest in what was going on inside that meeting. And lo and behold, it looks like it's going to be pretty critical to Jack Smith's case. Yeah, Jim, this tells us that DOJ and Jack Smith's team are looking at absolutely everything as they should. That's the job of a prosecutor. And while the worst ideas that were posed to Donald Trump at this meeting, declaring martial law, seizing voting machines, declaring Sidney Powell special counsel, while those were not followed, this was still a seminal moment for everything else that did follow. This is the sort of ground zero, because after this, we saw some of the same people organizing the attempt to pressure state legislators and state governors, organizing the effort to submit these false elector documents to the National Archives, and ultimately uh, orchestrating the attempt to pressure the vice president, Mike Pence, to throw out the electoral vote. So this is a crucial part of the story. And as a prosecutor, you absolutely have to have it as part of your overall presentation and consideration of who to charge with what. Yeah, I remember talking to my sources at the time, and, and these sources were describing an effort that was essentially throwing everything but the kitchen sink, well, including the kitchen sink, and trying to overturn those election results. <laughs> so it's no surprise uh, that this is a, a key part of this investigation. And we're also learning that Rudy Giuliani sat with investigators last month as part of a voluntary interview, was asked about this meeting. What is the significance of that? This is such an interesting development, and Jim, candidly, I can't figure out what to make of it, even as a former DOJ prosecutor. Here's why. Ordinarily, you would never bring in someone, nor would that person come in for this sort of voluntary interview if they were a target, if they were someone who was likely to be charged. It's unfair and bad practice for DOJ to do that if someone's a target, and no decent lawyer, and Rudy Giuliani has a decent lawyer, and Bob Costello would ever agree to do with that. Also, ordinarily, I would say this kind of meeting is a precursor to full-blown cooperation. However, there's no way you can 
cooperate Rudy Giuliani as a prosecutor in the full sense of the word. You can't put Rudy Giuliani on the stand and offer him to a jury as a witness. He's one of the least credible people in this whole saga. So what seems safe to say, given those two things, is that DOJ is doing its diligence here. They need to talk to everybody. Yeah. They need to get all the facts. If they think Rudy's offering some facts that are useful and truthful, fine. If they think he's lying or shading the truth, fine. They never have to use him as a witness. So it's a curious development, but I think they're trying to make sure that they look under every stone here. And Ali, the New York Times reported that Trump's former uh, White House chief of staff, John Kelly, said that Trump asked about having the IRS investigate Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, two FBI officials who were involved in the Russia investigation. What do you make of that? Not surprising in several respects. First of all, Donald Trump made it a habit when he was president of trying to use the levers of executive power to target his perceived political enemies, most famously DOJ. He used DOJ all the time and urged DOJ all the time to go after people in the FBI, people who he perceived as his enemies. Here, I think what's important to note is he's singling out these two people, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, who were part of the Mueller team. And he has gone after them publicly more times than we can count. So it's no question that he really had it in for them. It is important to note, of course, he asked about it. He did not follow through on it. There's no evidence that they were, in fact, targeted by the IRS, but there's no question Donald Trump wanted to go after them. And, and uh, former aide to former President Trump, Walt Nauta, pleaded not guilty to multiple counts related to the mishandling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Um, I mean, what do you expect? Do, Nauta might follow Trump's playbook here and try to delay this trial as much as possible right up against the 24 election uh, or after the 24 election. Can he do that as well or as effectively as a former president with that kind of a legal team that Donald Trump has? So I think it's a safe bet that Walt Nauta is going to be in league with Donald Trump here. There's no indication that Walt Nauta has flipped or will flip, although I've seen people surprise me with cooperating in my career here. Yeah, I think Walt Nauta is going to be very much on the same strategic page as Donald Trump. I think he's going to fight these charges vigorously. I think he's going to be right on board with let's try to push this thing off till after the election. And just inherently, if you have two defendants, there's more work to do. There's more discovery to turn over. There's more motions to be brought than you have, if you have one. And I think Walt Nauta and Donald Trump, it wouldn't at all surprise me if we find out in the coming days and weeks that they have what we call a joint defense agreement, which is perfectly mm -hmm. legitimate, nothing illegal about it. But it's when multiple defendants decide we're going to work together, we're going to have our lawyers work together, and we're going to have a unified defense here. And I absolutely expect to see that with respect to Nauta and Donald Trump. They do work closely with one another, so uh, that would not be too surprising. All right, Ellie Honig, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. All right. All right.